This part of the test will measure your speaking ability. It will last around 20 to 30 minutes. You will answer four questions. The first question will be about a familiar topic. The other three will be about short conversations, lectures, and reading passages. You can read and hear the lectures and paragraphs only once. You will see the time available for preparing the responses as well as the time to give your response on the bottom side of the screen. You have to stay within those time limits. Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Talk about advantages and disadvantages of car sharing apps. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. I would say that the car sharing apps are uh, more advantageous rather than disadvantageous. I would say that they are uh, convenient and cheap. Uh, I used uh, a car sharing app called Blah Blah Car. Um, I, when I lived in Amsterdam, I used it to get to Brussels and it was cheaper and more comfortable to, to, to use it, to do it like that, uh, rather than taking a bus or a train. But uh, the disadvantage of this is that it hurts local business. Basically, I used this uh, car sharing app instead of uh, giving the money to a transportation agency, to a, a company that runs buses or that runs trains. Speaking Task 2 You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. Don't you think it is great what they are planning to do with the renewable energy on campus? Yeah, I think it's amazing. It's pretty great. It will allow the university to eliminate its carbon footprint. It was about time if you ask me. I am happy you like it. I am thrilled about it. We need more of these initiatives. The world can't wait for us to make up our minds on climate change and pollution. I also like the fact that they will be using our own fellow students to make this happen. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I know a couple of people that will be involved in this project. They are quite excited. I only don't like where they are planning to put the wind farm. For me, that is the only negative about this whole thing. What do you mean? Why is it bad? Well, next to the stadium, we have a forest. It is a habitat for wild species of animals. It is quite amazing to walk through it. Oh, I didn't know that. It is not a good place to put the wind farm. I think it will be better to put it on the other side of campus. I really don't know why they chose this location. It will disrupt the ecosystem of that place. 
What does the male student think about the new project on campus? Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. He thinks it's a good idea because it will eliminate the university's carbon footprint. He also thinks that globally this is a really good thing because um, it will um, it is an initiative which will help with the climate change, which is a world problem. Uh, he also likes that they will be using uh, fellow students to complete uh, this project. But what he doesn't like is where the wind farm is going to be placed. Now, um, where, the fin where the wind farm is supposed to be, uh, there's a forest there right now. And placing the wind farm there will severely disrupt the, the local ecosystem. So he thinks that this is... Um, are, are re he thinks that uh, it would be better for the wind farm to be placed somewhere else. Speaking task three. You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. In this lecture, we will be discussing two types of organizational structures. One of them is called the functional organization, and the other one is the flat organization. The functional organization is a classical organizational structure where the employees are grouped hierarchically, managed through clear lines of authority, and report ultimately to the one person who is on top. This is basically what we think about when we talk about companies where we have a CEO on top with the top management underneath him or her, who then pass down the orders onto the middle management and then on to low management. This style is more suited for middle-sized and big companies. It helps them organize better the different departments they might have. The flat organization is the complete opposite to this. In a flat organization, we have the leaders interacting with ordinary workers who are on the front lines, who work with customers and suppliers. Here, we don't have the middle management. The top directly communicates with the bottom. This is really good for making quick and effective decisions. This organizational style unlike the previous ones, is much more suited for small business. Describe the two different types of organizational structures that the professor talks about. 
Include points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. The professor talks about the functional organization and the flat organization. Now, the functional organization is pretty much the traditional type of the organizational structure. Basically, we have the CEO at the top and then we have the hierarchy beneath him, you know, the middle and the low management. And uh, this form of organizational structure is uh, suited, is well suited for uh, middle companies and uh, big companies. Now, the other type of organization is the flat organization. Basically, here, the owner of the company or the CEO interacts directly with his or her workers. And there is no, there is nobody basically in the middle. And uh, this is a really a flexible uh, organizational structure and it's really well suited for uh, small businesses. It makes the small business flexible and it helps them make quick and effective decisions. You will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. The immune system is what our body uses to defend itself. It protects you against foreign microorganism, as well as cells of your own body that go rogue and can become cancerous. There are two types of defenses that your body has. One of them are the nonspecific defenses that protect you against a wide range of potential attacks. And we have the specific defenses, which are cells who work against a very particular cell or disease. We would use your skin as the best example of a non-specific defense barrier. Basically, your skin is there to prevent any unwanted intruder from getting into your body. Your skin has many mechanisms that does this. Inflammation is one such mechanism. It floods the point of intrusion with fluids and chemicals to prevent further problems. Another barrier that prevents unwanted visitors can be found in the stomach. The digestive juices can melt away bacteria and viruses that got in there and prevent them from getting deeper into the body. But let's say these walls were not good enough to prevent the intruders from getting in. Then your body will rely on its specific defenses. Here, your T cells and B cells come into play. They are in your blood. B cells create antibodies that attach to a virus that has gotten inside. When the antibodies attach to the virus, this makes it harmless since it prevents it from attacking the cells of your body. T cells can be helper T cells and killer T cells. Helper T cells are alarms that activate the B cells into producing the antibodies, while the killer T cells kill your cells that are infected by the virus. The reason why we say that T and B cells are part of the specific defenses is because they are connected to a specific virus. Describe the nonspecific defenses and specific defenses that the professor talks about. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. 
non-specific defenses are those barriers that protect our bodies from a wide range of uh, potential attacks. And specific defenses are defenses that protect us from specific threats. It could be a virus or some other cell. The professor talked about two examples for non-specific defenses, and that's basically the skin and the stomach. Uh, the skin is pretty much a barrier that prevents any, you know, something from getting in and potentially causing us harm, and also our stomach. The um, acid in the stomach can melt away any potential threat. But if these barriers fail, then we have specific defenses. And here he primarily talks about the T cells and the B cells. The B cells create antibodies which make a threat inert and uh, the T cells can be helper T cells which activate the B cells and they could be killer T cells which kill the cells that are infected already.